This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. Let's talk some about shoulder arthritis, what you need to know. Shoulder arthritis is the loss of normal cartilage from the humeral head on your left and from the glenoid socket on your right. There are a number of different types of shoulder arthritis. Let's look at a few of these. This is a classic example of degenerative arthritis or sometimes called wear and tear arthritis. Here's some x-rays showing that. This particular patient has a huge goat's beard osteophyte. You can see that sort of looks like the long beard of a goat. You can see also that there is no cartilage between the ball and the socket, so this patient has bone rubbing on bone. There's some fragments of worn away bone floating in around in the joint. And here on the axillary view, you can see that the ball is wearing into the socket. Um, again, there is no joint cartilage separating the two joint surfaces. Osteoarthritis often has what we refer to as posterior decentering. By that I mean that the ball, instead of sitting centered in the golf tee here, is sitting on the back edge of it. And this usually produces a substantial amount of discomfort, once again because the ball is touching the socket without any uh, cushioning of the articular cartilage in between. Interestingly enough, this decentering is shown best with the arm in, uh, away from the side to, in what we call the axillary view, which we discussed previously under the normal shoulder. Another type of arthritis is suture anchor arthropathy. And this is the kind of arthritis that comes when a previous surgery has left suture anchors like these proud on the surface of the socket. And when these suture anchors are prominent, they can erode away the cartilage as is shown here. So this is a substantial amount of damage to the humeral head resulting from these prominent suture anchors that were placed at a previous surgery. Here is an example on x-ray showing the suture anchors and you can see how prominent they are sticking out from the glenoid and how they have resulted in flattening of the humeral head. And here on the axillary view, you, you can once again see the prominent suture anchors sticking out into the joint. Here's an example of what we call post-septic arthritis or, a, or arthritis from, a previous, from an infection after a previous surgery. In this case, it was an arthroscopic surgery and the shoulder got infected after that and that resulted in cyst formation in the glenoid socket due to the inflammation from the bacteria as well as loss of the joint surface between the ball and the socket, both in the AP view and in the axillary view. Another kind of arthritis is that that arises after treatment of a fracture. And here you can see that the ball and never got completely aligned with this attempt at fixing it with a plate and screws. So as a result, we have an irregularly shaped ball that doesn't fit nicely with the socket. And so we have bone rubbing on bone in both of these views. And you can see there also is a prom problem with prominent screw hardware sticking out of the ball and into the bone of the socket. Another kind of arthritis can result from recurrent dislocations or instability. In this case, uh, the patient had had a previous operation using staples and screws to try to keep the shoulder from dislocating. And as a result of uh, that surgery, the patient developed arthritis once again with bone-on-bone -bone contact. And you can see also that we have posterior decentering of the ball with the humeral head sitting on the back of the glenoid socket. This is an example of rheumatoid arthritis, and you can see that looks quite a bit different. There are no bone spurs, but there is loss of the cartilage between the ball and the socket. And there are also these what we call marginal erosions right here and right here where the active synov synovium of the rheumatoid arthritis shoulder 
have eaten their way into the bone. You can also see that the density of this bone is quite a bit less than what we saw in the previous uh, x-rays. Again, another feature of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Again, emphasizing the absence of the bone spurs that we've seen on previous cases. This is a kind of arthritis that we call rotator cuff tear arthritis. In this situation, the rotator cuff is gone, and so the, it no longer stabilizes the humeral head in the center of the socket. So the head rises upward and rubs against the bone on the upper aspect of the shoulder. Uh, this bone is known as the acromion. So you can see that there is this time upward decentering of the humeral head with respect to the socket. Here is another case showing even more severe upward displacement of the humeral head relative to the glenoid socket. This is a kind of arthritis known as avascular necrosis, and here the head is collapsed for lack of blood supply. And this condition can result from the taking of steroid medication, from alcoholism, or from other causes such as working in deep tunnels underneath the sea, or from fractures. Here's another kind of arthritis that is referred to as chondrolysis, and this came from the use of a pain pump that infused local anesthetics into the joint after a, an arthroscopic surgery, and it's now been proven through work done here at the University of Washington that those local anesthetics, when infused into a joint, can cause the cartilage to disappear. This is a case of Charcot arthropathy named after a French neurologist many, many years ago. And it's the kind of arthritis that can occur when the joint lacks normal sensation. And this can come from diabetes or from what's called a syrinx uh, in the neck that interferes with the normal transmission of the nerve fibers. Also, people with syphilis and leprosy can get this kind of shoulder. So this is an overview of the different kinds of arthritis. Thanks for your attention. You might like to visit our blog as indicated here. You can click on this to take you to some new information on shoulder arthritis.